Alrighty, episode number three of the Patriot Network, and this is a brand new year. Welcome to 2010. Happy New Year. I want to talk today about exercising our Second Amendment rights, and I want to encourage everybody to get out your weapons. It's that time of year. Get out your weapons. Make sure they're all clean. Make sure that you've got every single weapon working and absolutely ready to be used. I want you to make as one of your New Year's resolutions a commitment to be schooled in how to use your weapons best. Now, if you have lost some of your talent or you haven't been paying attention or you haven't been out at the range and you haven't been doing your shooting, I want to encourage you to use one of the best resources we have here locally and that's Gunsight. If you head out to Paulden and head out to Gunsight, you've got a whole bunch of people out there who are the greatest. Uh, Ed Head is, uh, has been on the radio show a few times, great guy, well trained, former border agent, but they employ a group of people who are just absolutely excellent. Uh, ladies, if you want to get your concealed carry permit, they have a course set up just for women. It's taught by women instructors. There are only women in the course. It is a wonderful way to become competent with a firearm. But I want you to commit to the exercise of your Bill of Rights and I want you to commit this year to getting your Second Amendment rights in order and get your concealed carry permit, get your weapons working, get them cleaned, get them honed in, get out to the range. Make a commitment to go through 100 rounds a week this year. Get out to the range once a week, go through 100 rounds. Make sure that you are giving the projection to everyone around you, friend and foe alike, that you are schooled in your Second Amendment rights, that you understand what your weapons are for, how they're used, and how they're correctly used for the defense of property and person. Uh, it amazes me every year at this time, there are always three or four real ugly crimes in the break between uh, when, when Christmas and New Year's occur, and there are always some just horrible, horrible crimes. There, there was a family murdered on Thanksgiving by one of the family members. There was, you know, there was a couple of home invasions down in Phoenix, a couple more home invasions in LA. People who have their guns at the ready don't succumb to home invasions. People who have been trained at gun site and have their CCW, have their concealed carry weapon permit, and understand what it is to be in a mindset where you're not going to be victimized, they don't end up in the newspaper as fatalities from a home invasion. They end up in that story that the mainstream, the lamestream media won't cover, where they defend themselves and their property and they end up alive and the crooks, the bad guys end up dead. Make a commitment to yourself to renew your vow of citizenship as regards your ownership and use and mastery of weapons. Now, like I said, if you've fallen behind, if you're no longer at the top of your game, that's okay. There's tons of people out there who are trained and competent to help you. But I want every single person this year, reread the Second Amendment, the right to keep and bear arms. It shall not be infringed upon, shall not be abridged. You have a right. It resides in your very bones. It was granted to you by the Creator of the universe. If you don't own weapons, if you aren't schooled in the use of those weapons, and if you aren't ready, willing, and able to defend your property in person, you are inviting people to harm you. And I want you to ur I want to really urge you to consider the extent to which this is a binomial distribution. That is, there's only two states of being, there's success and failure. A successful Second Amendment worshiper, a, a devotee of the Second Amendment who's properly worshiping at the altar of freedom is someone who has their weapon at the ready, understands how to use it, has it cleaned and tuned up and ready to go, and they understand exactly how to use it to defend their property and their person. Every single person who does that is making America a better place. Your responsibility as a citizen is not that you have 911 on speed dial and you're going to call up some 21-year-old kid to come out in the middle of the night to protect your property in person. That doesn't work. Uh, just two weeks ago, I was doing an interview on my radio show and uh, we were discussing the use of tasers and, and the lady that I was talking to said that she bought a taser because she has children, grandchildren who stay with her and she really likes the taser because she can incapacitate someone who breaks into her house and if one of the kids get it, they might get a shot but they're not going to get dead so she really likes her taser. A police officer called the show. He'd served 38 years in uniform. He said, I never once in 38 years 
actually got there right at the moment that a citizen needed my help. I got there afterwards. I got there to pick up the pieces. I got there to be, you know, you know, the car on the side, the police car says to protect and serve. It's to protect and serve the community. But when you dial 911 and you're looking at five minutes, seven minutes, ten minutes, whatever response time is to get from the station to your house, what are you going to do in that five minutes, that seven minutes, that ten minutes? Are you prepared? Did you listen to Thomas Jefferson speaking to you through the U.S. Constitution, through the Second Amendment? Have you heard the Founding Fathers that you are responsible for your safety? Not the President of the United States, not the County Sheriff, not the police, you. Your property is protected by you. Your property is protected by you and you alone. Your safety is provided by you and you alone. Your spouse, your children, your extended family depend on you and you alone. It is time in the new year as you make your commitment, you know, what's my new year's resolution? To make my house safer than it's ever been. To be more skilled and more schooled in my firearms use than I've ever been before. To get my CCW renewed. It's time to get the CCW renewed. It's time to be doing 100 rounds a week through each of the weapons I own to make sure that if someone's trying to break into my house, if someone's trying to steal my property, hurt my person, or hurt my family, that I am schooled and ready to do the things necessary to protect them. And I want to urge all of my fellow citizens to be equally prepared because the way that crime works is they're looking for the weak spot. They're looking for the unprepared person. If every single person in Yavapai County is schooled, if we all, every single one of us have a CCW, you're going to see the crime rate, violent crime rate drop and drop radically. And it only takes just tiny little changes at the margin can greatly change the way that criminals behave. If the criminals read in the paper that a criminal breaks into a house and is shot dead, that is a wonderful focus of the mind. Nothing focuses the mind like a hanging. There are about 34, 3,500 people, give or take, on death row in the United States today. Average time to an execution is 16 years in the United States. That doesn't work. There is no detrimental effect. There is no effect currently to the way we use the death penalty. Now, if we arrested you and six weeks later we executed you, then the death penalty would be a wonderful deterrent to violent crime. But we're not doing that currently. So you as the homeowner, you as the gun owner, you as the person who has been given a Second Amendment right by the creator of the universe, you have to step forward and take care. You have to take care of yourself, you have to take care of your property, you have to take care of your family. It's time to recommit to what it is to be an adult American citizen. The United States of America depends on you, independent of the government, free between the ground and God in that space that's been created by the Founding Fathers for you. You must step forward, be armed, be dangerous, and be ready to protect yourself, your property, your person, and your family. If you're not ready to do that, it doesn't matter what the police do, doesn't matter what the sheriff does, it doesn't matter what DPS does, doesn't matter what the Marine Corps, the Coast Guard, the Air Force, the Army, the Navy, doesn't matter. It starts with you. I want to encourage every single person to take this seriously. Your Second Amendment rights are your most precious rights. They enforce all the others. It's time for you to be armed and it's time for you to give off that aura to all of the criminals that you are armed, you're prepared, and if they come after you, you're ready. Commit anew. Be a born-again Second Amendment advocate. Be a born-again gun owner. Be a born-again citizen who believes deeply in your responsibility as well as your rights. The top of the hand is a right, the bottom of the hand is a responsibility. They can't exist without each other. Your rights and your responsibilities go hand in hand. You can't be a real U.S. citizen unless and until you're willing to protect yourself and use the tools given to you by the Founding Fathers. The Second Amendment is there for a reason, to make you safe. If you're waiting, and think about Katrina, think about the Rodney King riots in Los Angeles, if you're waiting for the police to show up, if you're waiting for the national government to show up, if you're waiting for the National Guard to get there, you're on a fool's air. I'm begging you. Act as if your rights matter because they do. Now get out there and have a great day. It's the freest country on earth. It's the only country we've got. And let's just take her back one person at a time. See you next week.